All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, can I just check that you guys can hear me? Just uh, type on the chat, anyone. Thank you, Bran. Good morning, everybody. Gavin. Uh, so I today and tomorrow, I'm going to be taking over from my fellow bald man, Ryan. <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing a very quick uh, flow show today and tomorrow. So expect a deterioration in quality and uh, time. <clears throat> and I have to say it's a holiday here today. So I'm going to be doing this and then it's off to the beach. Um, okay, so let's start with the headlines. Whoops, that's a chat room. Um, well, before we go into the data, uh, it was pretty quiet on the geopolitical front. There's a couple of um, headlines about um, a senior Hamas official saying that they will not participate in the talks on a Gaza ceasefire and hostage release. So um, still not looking like there's going to be any kind of uh, resolution there at the moment. Uh, on the Ukraine front, Zelensky said that um, his forces are continuing to advance in the Kursk region in Russia. Uh, yeah, um, that's been that's been two and a half years now. And I remember when it first started, people were saying, oh, two, three months is going to be all over. Anyway, so... Um, um, not um, nothing huge uh, in terms of geopolitical events. So we did have quite a bit of data, though, and we're going to go through that uh, briefly. So US CPI was the main event yesterday. Um, it came in broadly in line. I mean, just the headline CPI year on year was 0.1 lower than expected, probably some kind of really close rounding or anything. I think we can treat this as a non-event or basically came in as expected. Um, the, the, what do, what do we, you know, what's the takeaway from these numbers? The takeaway for me is that the trend is still slowly to the downside for, uh, for inflation. It's still not at the 2% target, but it's getting there. This will help the Fed with their September, uh, meeting. Now the question is, are they going to do 25 or are they going to do 50? I think the... I think at the moment, the Fed is looking more at in, uh, employment rather than inflation. Inflation, they can kind of claim that, yeah, we're on the right track. Um, unemployment is the the difficult part of the dual mandate. And that, if you remember, uh, spiked up last, uh, last print. And the trend is not looking good on that side. So... Is it going to be a 25 or a 15 September? We have a few more data points, but it's really going to depend on unemployment. I personally don't think that we're going to have such a huge deterioration that um, will warrant a 50 cut. But um, you never know. Obviously, if we see another market um, sell-off uh, like we saw a couple of weeks ago, that will also... Um, uh, make the markets believe that the 50 is more probable. Uh, as things stand at the moment... I think it's going to be a series of 25s, but as I said before, of course, we don't know. So uh, yesterday's US data was as expected, and actually markets uh, uh, reacted, um, well, didn't react really. So that kind of reinforces that fact. Um, today, we had a few important data points. Again, uh, Japanese GDP came in at 0.8%. Uh, percent uh, compared to 0.6 expected, so that was stronger. Um, GDP price index also stronger. You know, a pretty pretty decent data from the from Japan uh, for a change. Um, also, Australian employment change was stronger than expected. Um, unemployment rate ticked up 0.1, but participation rate ticked up 0.2. So that kind of uh, um, cancels each other out, I think. So, you know, fairly decent numbers from the from Australia as well. Uh, China, well, are these numbers real or made up? Who knows? But um, slightly disappointing on the unemployment and on industrial production. Um, UK GDP was in line, 0.6% quarter on quarter. Um, and we also had Norges Bank uh, holding rates uh, at 450 and uh, a few comments from the central bank head uh, that the um, he said that based on the current assessment of the outlook, the the rate will likely be kept at the current level for some time. 
and uh, a tight policy stance is likely needed for some time to bring inflation down to target. Um, he has also said that uh, inflation has fallen back quite a bit considerably from the peak, uh, but um, a rise in business costs will slow the disinflation, and they are also particularly concerned with the kroner in uh, developments. We're going to look at the euro, euro knock and the dollar knock later. Um, so that was a central bank that has not cut at the moment, but um, I think they're all going to join the bandwagon eventually. Um, we do have some uh, pretty important data today, the U.S. retail sales. Um, that has been, let's have a look at the recent trend. Yeah, it's been roughly flat for the past uh, year or so. Um the other one, uh, Philly Fed Manufacturing, New York Empire State. I was looking at this chart the other day, and it's interesting. We have a whole lot of negative numbers for the past year, year and a half, maybe two years. Um, and if we look back, when did we have such kind of uh, prolonged um, negative readings? Well, we had COVID, and then you have to go back to the 2008 crisis. So this is telling us something. Um and uh, things, you know, things in the U.S. and globally have uh, not looked very rosy recently in the in the recent months. Uh, people talking about the recession. We haven't seen um, evidence of that yet, but uh, we know that GDP is a lagging indicator, and in the recession we could already be in a recession, and we're going to find out in three to six months. Any case, um, we have some other data: uh, industrial production business inventories, all that. That's fine. Um, okay, so let's go to markets and see what we have. I always start with yields. Forgive me, I, I'm always on the daily charts. Uh, I, I rarely go anything um, uh, shorter time frame. I look at daily and weekly. So my point of view is very different to Ryan's and Cayman's. So you will have to deal with that, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, so yields. <clears throat> For those who have been following us on the face webinars and you know all our uh, in the chat room and everything, I've been saying for weeks that I thought this uh, structure and yield in the 10 year yes is going to resolve to the downside. And it was fantastic because we broke below the trend line, retested, I mean almost to the to the pip, and then wham, this was um, following the um, US unemployment data. Uh, we started pricing in multiple 50s and all that. I think I think that's a little bit too much, but still, yields have fallen. And uh, we broke below that 378 low from late 2023. Uh, false breakdown at the moment, but we are close to retesting. So this is, um, this is definitely looking bearish for yields, bullish for bonds. And if we go, if I, if I had to put a target to this, I would have to say 330 to 340. That's... That's been what I was calling for for, for weeks now before this uh, broke to the downside. And I think that's a, a nice neutral level because anything below that uh, will mean that we're in a, in a severe recession and uh, there's some kind of crisis, uh, maybe you know regional banks again, I don't know, but uh, it will mean bad things and we really don't want that to happen. Um, so we have broken, we are ready to break again below this you know if you put a gun to my head i think it goes lower um and the, my ultimate target is 330 now of course if things get really messy then we could go below that um so with yields uh dropping and uh being sold on every every rally we have equities which are seeing support and yes we saw let me just do that um we saw this drop from 5,600 to 5,100 or so, uh, which was, you know, quick and 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 uh, strong. But in the grand scheme of things, we are still on an uptrend. And um, I think we really have to drop below these lows for me to say, okay, this is starting to be a bear market. Uh, so anything be uh, anything up to 49, 49, 25 or so, uh, I think is still corrective, nothing goes in a straight line. And let's face it, if the Fed start cutting rates, uh, this usually brings uh, strength to stocks. Uh, and as I said before, only something 
major, like a major black swan event will bring uh, stocks lower. The problem that um, stock equity bears have is that with money supply and, cre and uh, credit supply increasing at such a level, uh, there's no other way uh, in the medium term than higher. There really isn't. Inflation alone will take everything higher. So the question is, how far is the dip going to be and when do we buy it? That's why we've seen over the past 15 years just buying the dip every single time. Even COVID, if you go back to the COVID uh, crash, which was incredible, right? We've never seen this before. It was a big crash because the economy had just stopped everywhere. And look at the look at the result. I mean, within, this is March, this is August, within five months, um, we're gone right back. So... That's a problem that I have with being bearish equities is that eventually you're going to get new highs and you keep going. Uh, but for now, this is a, a, a nice little correction. Um, I think the most likely scenario, because I think yields are going lower, most likely scenario, we keep grinding higher in equities. Um, so let's move to currencies. The dollar, I said before, uh, I think the yields are going to go lower, and I think the dollar is also going to resolve to the downside. We're almost at this um, trend line. Uh, didn't touch it, didn't touch it again. But, um, you know, this is not a bad place to take a, a, a counter trend long, if you like, but you have to know where your stops are, which are going to be a little bit below, you know, 102s or something like that. And um, But I think this will resolve to the downside, as will yields in tandem. So we've seen the dollar, um, you know, take a step back. Uh, as a result, we saw the euro dollar, which is 50% of the DXY index, um, break above this trend line, which goes back to last year, 12-month um, trend line. And we've broken above. And I think there's a little bit more clean air. Um, and I, I really think we could... Um, Test these highs at uh, one twelve seven. Obviously, not today or tomorrow or next month, but I think that's coming uh, in line with um, my view on the the DXY breaking lower. Um, other pairs that I'm looking at the euro pound. I had been bearish as long as it was below uh, eighty five. Uh, that had been working well, but now above eighty five, I'm back to neutral uh, and waiting to see what's going to happen. The UK actually. Uh, I was reading today, you know, the UK GDP first two quarters of this year has been 0.6 and 0.7%, if I recall, and the Eurozone was 03 So the UK, you know, against all odds, is still doing okay. Um, so, um, you know, not the complete disaster that people were looking at after the Brexit. So, um, you know, it's starting to to stabilize. Let's, let's leave it at that. Uh, Norway, we talked about Norges Bank and how they think they're going to be on hold for a little bit longer. And they said that they are looking at developments on the kroner, and they're concerned. Why? Because the kroner has been weak. And um, we know that they have been themselves selling uh, kroner against uh, against euros. Uh, and uh, so they are partly to blame <laughs> for the weakness. Uh, but um, the kroner is, again... Um, undervalued I think uh, it has been consistently undervalued I like Europe uh, Norway and dollar Norway to the downside but at the moment we're in no man's land we really have to break below this 1120-ish for me to get interested and if you if you go back you will see that this is at um, very high levels historically you know these this range here we've had only been there during COVID in the past so something to remember and um I'm not touching it yet, but I like it. I like shorts there. I like shorts in dollar Norway, but again, we're in no man's land here, so I'm not touching it until we break below um, these levels. Another um, currency that I like to look at, dollar Mex. I had been uh, bearish this below 1850, and I have been had been saying for weeks and weeks, as long as we're below 1850, I really like this short because you get a really nice carry as well, and. Um, uh, but that that now broke above, so I am no longer bearish that, in case people had heard me um, talking about that uh, in previous weeks. Uh, waiting for that uh, to resolve as well, um, because now we're just, uh, again, in no man's land. Um, okay, let's look at metals. I love metals, you know that. 
I look at gold. I mean, gold reigns supreme. And I was saying for for months and months while we were in this um, consolidation, sideways consolidation, just how well it was uh, performing on the face of massive rate cuts, ev- rate hikes everywhere. Well, as soon as uh, the rate hike stopped, we broke above and we are in what I think is a bullish flag. And really, I see no other direction than higher. If there is a general crisis, of course, everything gets sold. We've seen that. But um, gold for me is the, the ultimate safe haven asset. And I think it will go to much higher levels. Um, silver is a little bit different because, uh, as I've said before, it's industrial use and it gets it tends to get sold um, with risk. But today is doing well. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit technically it doesn't look as good as gold, obviously. But uh, and and for people who follow me, um, you will know I unwound a good chunk of my longs above um, in the high 30s and above 31. And I'm waiting for 2610 to uh, to reload. I still have a long from all the way down from 2310, but uh, I'm not touching that. I don't think we're going to get 2610, but if we do, uh, I'm going to be um, getting some more in. Or if we break above again, I'm going to be getting more in there. Uh, at the moment, we are, again, no man's land, uh, just sitting and watching it. Platinum is another one I'm looking at. Uh, I do have a long position from higher, from, from a bit higher from here, but uh, I'm looking to add more if we get towards this 820 level. Um, but other than that, uh, Platinum has also kind of come back in this channel. Unfortunately, I thought we were breaking down, but we are not. Uh, cryptos had a, a pretty difficult time uh, some sessions ago with this uh, post breakdown. I think this took to quite a few bears uh, along for the ride. And now we're back in between. You know, technically this looks like a bull flag. So if yields drop and equities rise, which I think they probably will, this should follow. Um, Ethereum is looking worse. You know, it's similar. Bitcoin is like gold. Ethereum is like silver. Bitcoin is looking better technically, trades more resiliently. Ethereum is all over the place, but um, it tends to outperform in a big way when it does go either way um we did break below this uh, um well flag channel whatever you want to call it but it seems to have been a false breakdown this was a big big candle here my god um i really wouldn't want to touch um ethereum here unless we see a, a, like a decent bounce if we start seeing a decent bounce and i think we have all the uh, ingredients for a nice push higher and and you remember you know just going from 2700 to no, 3,000 is 10%, right? So it's not uh, uh, it's not to be uh, to be mocked, a move like that. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's a rough uh, view of the markets at the moment. We wait for the data today, uh, see what retail sales bring. But um, I'm going to leave it at that. It's going to be a, a short one, as I said before. And uh, I hope I'm not... Uh, boring or tiring everybody oh ran us for okay i'm gonna have a cable and dollar yen and then we have we and then we go so what have i got for cable cable man it's it's in no man's land at the moment again i look at daily charts so i'm not uh you know i'm not um i'm not going to be looking at something that happens today or tomorrow so you know if you look at this i'm not touching it until we get to oh this is 100 150 pips away so sorry nothing nothing from me on this um today and the dollar yen dollar yen is interesting look at this really really strong trend line we broke and we are probably going to try and retest i th- I, I think um actually this is nice i think i'm going to try short on this if we get close to this uh, 149 um i'm bearish a dollar in the medium term and i think the yen is still one of the currencies that i would like to be bearish against the, the problem is carry so it's negative carry but um this this can move quite quite briskly so i i, w- I would wait for a 149 uh for a short and of course you know if you're wrong uh it's a little bit above above there anyway i'm going to leave it at that I thank you all for being here and I will see you tomorrow and I'm off to beach. Take care.
Bye bye. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.